The City of Muskegon City Commission meeting for number November 22nd, 2011 is now called to order. Uh, we'll open with uh, prayer led by Pastor Josh Deere from Lakeside Baptist Church, and we will follow that with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor? Thank you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day, and we acknowledge that this day and every other day that you bless us with is a gift from you. We fall so short in our efforts to know you, to worship you, to obey you, and to glorify you with our lives, yet you love us anyway, and you shower your mercy and grace upon us in ways far beyond what any of us deserve. The very least that we can do is to tell you and to let others know how very thankful we are for your love and goodness. <clears throat> Lord, we do thank you for the city of Muskegon, and we thank you for the leaders you've blessed us with. We ask you to bless them tonight and grant them wisdom as they work together to both lead and serve the people of Muskegon. And we ask that as all of us gather together with family and friends over these next few days, that you help us to remember how very much we have to be thankful for. Most importantly, Lord, help us to remember that the ultimate source of all our blessings is you. Give us thankful hearts and give us giving hearts. And help us to love others as you have been so faithful to love us. We thank you for who you are and for all of your many blessings upon us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Madam Clerk, may we have the consent agenda, please? After the roll call. Commissioner Carter? Here. Vice Mayor Gowen? Here. Commissioner Shepard? Here. Commissioner Spataro? Here. Mayor Warmington? Absent. Commissioner Waringo? Absent. Commissioner Wisniewski? Here. Now? Okay. Can we? Approval of minutes, City Clerk. Summary request to approve minutes of the November 7th City Commission meeting. Staff recommendation, approval of the minutes. Approval of Realtor and Title Company for CNS, Community Neighborhood Services. Summary request to, exge to extend the procurement contract to June 30th, 2012 for Exit Lakeshore Realty and Mid-State Title Agency to be used by the City of Muskegon Community Neighborhood Services Office. The CNS office put out public notices for a variety of trades. No bids were received for realtors or title companies. We already have a good working relationship with Exit Lakeshore Realty and Mid-State Title Agency. We would like to extend their contract until June 30, 2012. Staff recommendation to approve the extension of the procurement contracts for Exit Lakeshore Realty and Mid-State Title Agency for the Community Neighborhood Services Office. Budgeted Vehicle Replacements, Public Works, Summary Request. Authorized staff to purchase one 2012 Ford F450 4x4 dump truck. This vehicle will be in addition to the highway department for alley plowing and cul-de-sac cleanup. Staff recommendation, authorized staff to purchase one 2012 Ford F450 4x4 dump truck from Vander Hyde Ford, who is the lowest responsible bidder. Intergovernmental agreement for traffic signal maintenance contract extension, public works. Summary request. Authorize staff to sign an intergovernmental agreement for traffic sign maintenance. This is a one-year contract extension from a previous three-year contract with the Muskegon County Road Commission, along with other municipalities from March 9, 2012 through March 9, 2013, with Windmiller Electric Incorporated as the traffic si signal maintenance contractor. The agreement calls for MCRC to administer the project and charge the participating agencies 15% overhead. The local agencies including in, included in the Muskegon County Signal Maintenance Group are Muskegon, Muskegon Heights, Norton Shores, Roosevelt Park, and MDOT. Staff recommendation, approve the request. Consideration of bid contract award for roof replacement over police department engineering. Summary request. Authorize staff to enter into an agreement with Gale Roofing out of heart to replace the roofing system over the police department portion of City Hall, Jefferson side, for a total cost of $12,223. Gail was the lowest responsible bidder, with the only other bidder being J. Stevens Construction for $19,600.
Staff recommendation, authorize staff to enter to an agreement with Gail Roofing to replace the roofing system over the police department. Request to amend existing resolution 2011-69B for an obsolete property certificate J&J &J bail bonds 41 East Apple Avenue, planning and economic development. Summary request. Pursuant to Public Act 146 of the Michigan Public Acts of 2000, J&J &J bail bonds 41 East Apple Avenue was approved for an obsolete property certificate on September 27, 2011. The Michigan State Tax Commission has requested that the resolution be amended to include language stating that the city will not allow an extension of additional years pursuant to the City of Muskegon obsolete property rehabilitation policy. Staff recommendation. Staff recommends approval. Commissioners, you've heard the consent agenda. Are there any items you would like removed for further discussion? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Commissioner Carter. Seeing none, I move we uh, approve the consent agenda as read. Support. It has been moved by Commissioner Carter and supported by Commissioner Wisniewski to accept the consent agenda as presented. Is there any discussion? Roll call. Vice Mayor Galwin. Yes. Commissioner Shepard. Yes. Commissioner Spataro. Yes. Commissioner Wisniewski. Yes. Commissioner Carter. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Public hearings, please. Request for an industrial facilities exemption certificate, ADAC Plastics. Planning Economic Development. Summary request. Pursuant to Public Act 198 of 1974, as amended, ADAC Plastics 1801 East Keating Avenue has requested the issuance of an industrial facilities tax exemption certificate. The company will be making an investment of $4,690,000 in real property improvements and plans on creating 130 jobs within two years. They are eligible for a 12-year abatement. Staff recommendation, approval of the resolution granting an industrial facilities exemption certificate for a term of 12 years on real property. Thank you. Mr. Franzik, good evening. Hello. Um, the IFT will be for $4.69 million in real property improvements. Um, the next item on the agenda is for the 328, which goes hand in hand with this uh, investment. That's for $15.78 million in personal property, which will be 100% abatement on that. Um, staff is recommending a 12-year abatement on both. Um, they have met with Dewana Thompson on their affirmative action policy. And we also have Jim Teets, Bill Powers, and John Shape from ADAC Automotive here tonight. Good. And yeah, Ms. Thompson, their uh, figures look uh, very nice as far as uh, their, their plans, their affirmative action. They're, they're at, what, 31% uh, minority, 52% uh, female uh, within their workforce, yes. I think. And everything very, very uh, commendable. Well, ADAC does a really good job here in Muskegon of um, hiring a workforce that represents the community that they serve. So we're really excited about this. Very good. Commissioner Carter? Um, normally this is when I step in and give my little spiel about what we just talked about. Um, I am glad that I do not have to give my spiel tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I... ADAC is a classic example of a company coming in and actually representing the community that it is in. They do an excellent job of making sure they have a good mix of minority workforce here in Muskegon. I commend ADAC and I give you kudos for the work that you've done um, here in the city of Muskegon and the continuing work that you do here in um, hiring people from the city. And your company definitely, definitely reflects the city of Muskegon. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the commissioners? Uh, would any of the gentlemen uh, like to uh, address the commission and the public? Mr. Shake. Thank you. Uh, I Could I have you uh, sure. step right on up to the uh, the hot seat, I mean the podium, <laughs> and uh, we just need your name and your address for the record, please. Thank you. Uh, my name is John Shape, S-H-A-P-E, uh, representing ADAC Plastics, and my address is Grand Rapids, Michigan, not Muskegon, unfortunately, for this discussion. Uh, however, I wanted to thank Muskegon for all the support that you've given us as well. Uh, we have made a very large commitment to the city of Muskegon. Uh, our largest concentration of employees and our largest concentration of work is here within the city. And so we are planning to be here a very, very long time. And just wanted to thank all, all of you for the support that we've been given. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for your continued uh, 
support. I congratulate you on your continued success, and we certainly appreciate your continued partnership and your investment within the community. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone from the public like to comment uh, during this period? No, th this is on the yes, uh, on the hearing here. Thank you. Right, Commissioner Spataro? Seeing uh, no comments uh, from the uh, public regarding the request for the <coughs> industrial facilities exemption certificate, I would move that we close the public hearing and Sorry. approve the resolution granting an industrial facilities exemption certificate for a term of 12 years on the real property for ADEC. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Spataro and seconded <coughs> by Commissioner Shepard to close the public hearing and approve the request for the industrial facilities exemption certificate for ADAC plastics. Um, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Shepard? Yes. Commissioner Spataro? Yes. Commissioner Wisniewski? Yes. Commissioner Carter? Yes. Vice Mayor Gowron? Yes. Motion passes. Item B, please. Request for exemption of new personal property, PA 328, ADEC Plastics, Planning Economic Development. Summary request. Pursuant to Public Act 328 of 1998, as amended, ADEC Plastics Incorporated, 1801 East Keating Avenue, has requested an exemption of new personal property. The property plans on investing $15,780,000 in personal property improvements and is seeking a 12-year exemption on personal property. The exemption would include all new personal property investments during the duration of the exemption. Staff recommendation, approval of the exemption of new personal property for a duration of 12 years. Are there any questions on part of the uh, commission on this segment? Are there any questions or input from the public on this part of the discussion? Commissioner Carter? Seeing none, I move that we close the public hearing and approve the request for exemption for new personal property for ADAC plastic for a term of 12 years. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner Carter and seconded by Commissioner Spataro. To close the public hearing and authorize a request for exemption of new personal property for ADAC plastics. Any uh, further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Spataro? Yes. Commissioner Wisniewski? Yes. Commissioner Carter? Yes. Vice Mayor Gowron? Yes. Commissioner Shepard? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Gentlemen, good luck and continued success. Thank you so much. Item C, please. Establishment of a commercial rehabilitation district, 363 Ottawa Street, planning economic development. Summary request. Pursuant to Public Act 210 of 2005, as amended, Lake Welding Supply has requested the establishment of a commercial rehabilitation district. The creation of the district will allow the building owner to apply for a commercial rehabilitation certificate, which will freeze the taxable value of the building and exempt the new real property investment from local taxes. The school operating tax and the state education tax are still levied on the new investment. Land and personal property cannot be evaded under this act. Staff recommendation, establishment of the commercial re rehabilitation district at 363 Ottawa Street. Hi, Mike. Back again. Hello. <laughs> um, this is for the Commercial Rehabilitation District, which we must establish first. Um, it's for a $1.4 million uh, expansion of their facilities. Uh, they were not eligible for an IFT um, for the State Tax Commission guidelines. However, they are eligible, eligible uh, for this abatement. Um, we need to pass the district resolution, uh, and then we send that over to the county. They have 28 days to accept or reject it and then we must come back here to grant them the uh, certificate. And Good. we do have Greg Tierman here from Lake Welding Supply tonight. Okay, Greg. Good evening. <coughs> Greg Tierman, controller for Lake Welding Supply. Uh, my address is 1144 Anthony Drive. And um, Lake Welding Supply has been in business since 1953. Uh, since 1991, we're a 100% employee-owned company. Our desire here is to expand our facilities to better serve our customer base, um, expand our inventory space, and also our display area, primarily our showroom. We hope to nearly triple that space to better display our wares and, and better serve our customers. 
Um, we'll be adding a total of about uh, 6,700 square feet uh, in a two-story addition. About 4,000 square feet of that will be a primarily showroom area. And uh, again, we, as an employee-owned company, we're blessed to have uh, you know, great employees that uh, I think our average tenure is about uh, 25 years. I'm a little, a little over that at 32, but uh, it's great to be a part of a company. Uh, I think you're all aware of uh, the fundraising activity going on with regards to the SNRF for uh, our, our former uh, owner, Sherm Pop, and established the ESOP for us, and uh, we've been blessed to be a part of that. So I invite any questions you might have. Commissioners? Glad to see you growing. Absolutely. We hope to keep your employee-owned operation going strong for many, many more years right here in the heart of Muskegon. So. Thank you. Uh, okay. My uh, thanks to Mike Franzik, Brian, uh, quite a few people that we've worked with. You've been most helpful in, in working us through this process, and we appreciate all the cooperation. Well, great. We're here to remain your, your partners and uh, hopefully walk hand-in-hand hand with you and your success. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Are there any comments or input in this issue from the public? Commissioner Carter. Seeing none, I move we close the public hearing and establish a commercial rehabil rehabil rehabilitation district at six, excuse me, 363 Ottawa Street. Support. <coughs> Who gets it, Spataro or Wisniewski? <laughs> Any man. Okay. It's been moved by Commissioner Carter, seconded by Commissioner Wisniewski to close the public hearing and establish a commercial rehabilitation district at 363 Ottawa Street. Any other comments or input by the Commission? Roll call, please. Commissioner Wisniewski? Yes. Commissioner Carter? Yes. Vice Mayor Gowern? Yes. Commissioner Shepard? Yes. Commissioner Spataro? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. And good luck. New business, please. Item A. Holidays in the City Resolution of Support Planning Economic Development. Summary request. A request to sign the resolution in support of holidays in the city, an event starting this Saturday in downtown Muskegon that will showcase the holiday events and unique retail destinations of downtown Muskegon. Everyone is encouraged to come downtown for the Teddy Bear <coughs> Breakfast, Festival of Trees, the Lighting of Hackley Park, shopping and dining, a window decorating contest with prizes for voters, and a movie showing at the Fraun Thought Theater. Staff recommendation, approval of the resolution. Commissioner Spataro. Thank you. Um, before I make a motion, I, I don't believe it's conflict of interest, but I should disclose that I'm on the board of downtown Muskegon now, which is uh, sponsoring uh, several of these events. So. Um, having said that, I would move that uh, we adopt the resolution of support for the various holidays in the city activities uh, for this coming weekend. Support. It has been moved by Commissioner Spataro and seconded by Commissioner Carter to authorize a resolution of support for holidays in the city. Any further comments or input? If not, roll call please. Commissioner Wesneski? Yes. Commissioner Carter? Yes. Vice Mayor Gowern? Yes. Commissioner Shepard? Yes. Commissioner Spataro? Yes. Motion passes. <laughs> Item B, please. Winter ice rink in downtown Muskegon, planning economic development. Summary request. Downtown Muskegon now, DMN, is planning an outdoor ice rink in downtown Muskegon from mid-January to mid-February. The ice rink will be located on the vacant lot owned by Parkland Properties. The ice rink will provide another opportunity for the public to enjoy the downtown during the winter season free of charge. In addition of sh to shopping, restaurant, and entertainment venues, Andrew Hahn, DMN director, has been working with city staff to develop a plan for installation of the rink. Since they are unable to use the fire hydrant, a separate water service must be installed. DMN is requesting that the cost associated with establishing this service be waived. Other partners in this venture include Parkland Properties, John Rooks, the Muskegon Lumberjacks, and the Muskegon Winter Sports Complex. Staff recommendation to consider the request from DMN and partner with the organization on some level to ensure that the ice rink is established in downtown Muskegon for the benefit of the public. Do you want staff input first before the motion? Sure. Okay. How about staff input before we entertain the motion? Sure. Thank you. Good evening, Ms. Good, Baker Good evening. Good to see you all. 
Uh, we bring this before you, and uh, I also am on the Downtown Muskegon Mall Board, as well as a couple of our commissioners. Uh, we've all been involved in trying to do uh, activities in the winter in particular to get folks downtown, make it an exciting place to be. This is one of the ideas that uh, Andrew, our director, and some others came up with. I think it's going to be a real plus to, to create a fun environment downtown. We're just going to try it the one month this year, see how it goes. Perhaps in the future we'd have it going on for a longer period of time. But as the clerk read, there are several partners involved in this. The city has been involved from the standpoint of looking at how that water can be provided. Uh, you know that some of our parks, we have provided that service with the water. This is a little more expensive than usual because they're not able to just use the fire hydrant. They're actually going to have to put a well in. And you do have the financial backup to show what that entails. Um, most of it is equipment and personnel time to assist. There's about $611 that is out-of-pocket expense for actual materials. So we're bringing this to you tonight to ask you to consider it, um, whether it's for the city to, to kind of take on that whole amount or a portion of it. Um, also, Ed Garner is here. Andrew, the director, was uh, he's out of town actually this week, so Ed has kindly agreed to step in, and he can address it as well in any questions that you might have. Okay. At this point, should we do a motion? Okay. Okay. Uh, do you want to take uh, uh, give questions now to Mr. Gardner and wait till after a motion? We really should have a motion on the floor so we can have discussion. Very good. Let me take care of I that. I would move that uh, we uh, approve the uh, request from downtown Muskegon now and its partners um, to uh, provide the um, the water hookup uh, so that they may have the ice rink downtown. Support. It has been moved by Commissioner Spataro and seconded by Commissioner Caro, um, Carter to consider the request from the downtown Muskegon now and partner with the organization on some level to ensure the ice rink is established in downtown. Uh, discussion? Questions? Evening, Mr. Gardner. I, I didn't have any questions as you did. <laughs> but, uh, Ed Garner, uh, President and CEO, Muskegon Area First. Uh, 380 West Western Avenue. We are the administrative a agency for downtown Muskegon now. So Andrew Hahn is one of our staff people. He does apologize for not being here tonight, but he uh, he took a little time uh, time off. His wife had planned. He'll he'll be back in time for all our holiday events this weekend. Uh, we do feel this is a, uh, a a new and exciting cause. Many communities have outdoor rinks uh, of this nature. Uh, we do have indoor ice skating, as you know, has been going up the L.C. Walker Arena, but we thought to bring this being an outdoor event would really be exciting for, for our downtown to attract people into the downtown area. Uh, do realize that there's a cost involved in that, uh, and, and we graciously ask the city to, to cover the entire cost, but if you don't see fit, we, you know, we are prepared to try to at least ask for, I think, contributions from a couple of people to help make it make it work, you know. But I... Um, we think it could be some fun and exciting for for our downtown environment here. So. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Spataro. Oh, did you have your? Well, I, I did. It's not really a question; it's a it's a concern. I mean, I support the concept of this proposal. I'm a little concerned that uh, there are a lot of community groups that do good things many of which may include the need for access to potable water. And historically, we've charged for that. Um, certainly, we don't have the resources uh, to accommodate everybody with a, with a request. And I just, I'm a, I'm a little concerned about opening the door to a lot of requests that we can't accommodate. And I, I think specifically of a number of community gardens that have gone in over the last few years, many of which have required uh, hookups to city water, which the community groups involved paid out of pocket to ensure that those hookups were, were made and paid the water bill. So, um, you know, I just want to make sure that by doing, I think uh, a good thing here, we're not setting ourselves up where we're getting a lot of people angry at us over the course of the next year or so. 
Uh, yes, maybe add yes some, please. You know, the, the request, and maybe this helps and maybe it does, maybe it muddies the water and makes the situation worse, but the request was for the city to contribute to the connection um, for the, the water. Um, the request is not for, <coughs> excuse me, is not for the city to provide the water, and it would be, I would anticipate that we would meter um, um, the water, and uh, that would be charged out like we do anybody else in the city pays for water as well. Um, our ordinances um, indicate that there, are, there is no free water. And right. So, would that um, be at the reduced rate, given that this water is not going into the sewer system, like we do for you know in the summer rate for homeowners? Uh, I, th I think we we can look at uh, making that accommodation. Um, maybe we treat that as a it's just as a water only account. Oh, okay. And you stated that our out of pocket cost would be approximately six hundred eleven dollars. Material cost. Material yeah. cost. That's the material cost. That's the material That's cost. The Any additional? Yeah. Labor. labor and the labor uh, and the uh, equipment and equipment. Yeah, yeah, total. It's a total of about nine. No, go right ahead. I don't. Um, it's about nineteen hundred dollars and some change, but um, the majority, as Kathy indicated, the majority of that is uh, labor and equipment. But there are six hundred eleven uh, dollars of uh, actual material costs. So we could foresee that this would be a one-time fee as we'd be all set up and ready to go for subsequent years that would be my understanding yes okay mm -hmm. any other further questions mm -hmm. thank you Ed. thank you thank you Kathy. roll call please commissioner wisniewski yes commissioner carter you vice mayor Gowran. yes commissioner shepherd yes commissioner spataro yes motion passes thank you is there any other business from the uh, commission? Just had one item uh, dovetails on the uh, Christmas in the city. Um, I'd like to encourage everyone to come downtown uh, this weekend for the lighting of the tree in Hackley Park at 6 p.m. on Saturday. And I'd like to extend a thank you to Ron and Jean uh, Valanga for the uh, donation of their I think a 30-foot uh, blue spruce in memory of uh, Ron's father, uh, Simon. And the uh, family was generous in uh, sharing the tree in the memory of uh, Ron's father so that uh, it can help keep us warm with uh, Christmas joy uh, beginning uh, this Saturday. So hope to see everybody down there uh, as we pull the switch and light the lights for the holiday. Uh, we have citizens here to speak, and I'd like to begin with uh, David Nye. Mr. Nye, if you would just uh, take the podium and please give your name and your uh, full address. All right. My name is David Nye. Uh, my address is 1495 Westwood Circle. That's in Norton Shores. Um, and uh, I would like to read an unratified working draft of Occupy Muskegon's declaration in three minutes. Uh, <laughs> we the people, citizens and inhabitants of the United States in the state of Michigan, in solidarity with the global occupation movement, have come together to assert nonviolently our indignation and defiance in the face of manifest dangers threatening our democracy, our homes, our freedoms, and our fundamental values. By common consent, we assert the following principles. We condemn the use of violence and intimidation against all peoples exercising their rights of free speech and peaceable assembly. We demand that no state of emergency be used to deny or abridge our constitutional and human rights, and demand that all emergency measures published or secret that infringe upon these rights be terminated. We condemn the misuse of national security and secrecy legislation to conceal fraud, waste, corruption, incompetence, and malfeasance at home and abroad. We condemn the use of undeclared and recurring wars as a tool of national policy. We condemn the outrageously irresponsible and criminal actions by officers of banks and financial institutions that have brought this country to the brink of ruin, inflicting untold damage on millions of our citizens while unjustly enriching the perpetrators. We demand full investigations of these actions and vigorous prosecutions to bring corporate scofflaws to justice. 
We demand the restoration and enforcement of antitrust laws to reverse the dangerous growth of uncertain banks and institutions that, by reason of their size, have achieved an unfair competitive advantage in restraint of free trade. We assert that no bank, financial institution, or insurance company can be allowed to become too big to fail. We condemn the brazen and systematic use of fraudulent documentation in effecting foreclosures. We observe that the outrageous and irresponsible conduct of our banks and financial institutions has been aided and abetted by the Federal Reserve and regulatory agencies endangering the security of our nation and demand that this be stopped immediately. We call for sweeping reforms in the financing of political campaigns and condemn the ability of corporations and the very wealthy to buy our elections and elected officials through unlimited monetary contributions and secretive lobbying. We demand that a living wage be made the norm for all employees and condemn the exploitation of workers anywhere. We call for a truly equitable restructuring and simplification of our tax laws. We demand that government surveillance of the internet and of libraries be curbed and that freedom of inquiry be assured. We call for government action to render unprofitable the exportation of American jobs. We demand the breakup of media monopolies and the restoration of a truly free and independent press with full and equal protections for all journalists in all mediums. We demand that the rights of employees to bargain collectively be guaranteed. We hold that access to health care is a basic human right, without which no one can enjoy life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and demand that effective action be taken to make it affordable to all citizens, regardless of their economic status. We reassert all human and civil rights guaranteed in the Declaration of Independence, the United States Constitution, and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and all other customary rights retained by the people. We maintain that corporations are not human beings. As mere human constructions and creatures of law, they must be firmly regulated. We demand the restoration of true democracy and the rule of law, the assurance of liberty and justice, justice for all, and the absolute right of the people to hold referenda on laws passed by our elected officials. We demand that the environment be protected from unsound practices that desecrate and destroy our air, forests, water, and wildlife, sacrificing the health, safety, and welfare of all of the Earth's species, including our own. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. And that was under three minutes. <laughs> wow. Outstanding. Daniel Mills. Good evening, Mr. Mills. It took him a little longer than that to write it, no, but we all had it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, by the way. Sure. Yeah, my name's Dan Mills, and uh, uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, city resident for a long, long time. Anyway, right now, programmer, uh, .NET, I'm a Microsoft certified application developer, and I'm employed now, uh, presently. And uh, before that, um, holder of a professional uh, teaching certificate in the state of Michigan. A bachelor's degree in mathematics, a minor in physics, master's degree in physics education, and eight years teaching in the public schools, and I've taught at five different colleges and universities. Uh, before that, I was in business with uh, two of my brothers, and in 1989, uh, we were awarded the prestigious Entrepreneur of the Award, uh, Year of the Award, uh, down at the Country Club, and this was from the uh, uh, Muskegon Area Economic and Growth Alliance. Yeah, so that's my background, and anyway, I'm here to announce my uh, involvement with the Occupy Muskegon movement and uh, introduce maybe some of my friends. You wouldn't know, I'm sure, from looking, but uh, one of the friends I'm talking about has a very nice residence on Rudderman Drive just north of the channel, uh, but he's been spending his time at our uh, camp cooking stew, raking, and taking care of that. This is since he's been back from Wall Street. You know, and others of us have extraordinary skills we could be capitalizing on, but instead of volunteering our time, now we do volunteer. Just this last week, several of us, at, uh, like staying overnights with homeless people for Families Promise, volunteering our time for the Exchange Club and stuff like that to help kids. But like, the, you know, you feed somebody a fish, you, you feed them one day, you teach somebody how to fish, you know, you don't have to keep giving them fish all the time. We like to fix the broken system, and we know from our own experience and from experiences that's verifiable and authenticated of other people that our system's broken from the top down. Our economic system's broken, our education system's broken, our judicial system's broken, our political system's broken, corrupted from the top with big money, and it's just, uh, we have a system that works. It's called horizontal democracy, meaning there's no leaders. It's a leaderless democracy, and we're demonstrating it actually works with the internet. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Joe Hawk. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joseph Hawk. I am an Occupy Wall Street General Assembly member and a member of Occupy Muskegon. Can we have your address, please, Joe? Uh, 118 Rudderman Drive, North Thank Muskegon. Thank you. 49445. Um, about a week and a half ago, Occupy Muskegon went to a uh, coffee house meeting with uh, Senator Jeff Hansen. And our big gripe with Mr. Hansen was why he would introduce 
and uh, agreed to uh, sign legislation, which was referendum approved. Um, I, Occupy Muskegon does not consider that a uh, democracy. In fact, uh, if you look it up in the, in Columbia's dictionary, that's straight out now fascism. Occupy Muskegon does not support fascism. And uh, when we asked Mr. Hansen, by the way, you could watch this on a live stream, uh, why you would even consider voting on, well, three bills so far, and they have one coming up, I believe, that is referendum proof, uh, he would really give us no answer. He could not look us in the eye. Um, and in fact, Mr. Hansen ducked out just as soon as he could. Um, uh, I have a, a small little uh, form here that uh, I would like to read to y'all that will explain uh, some of the Occupy Movement's attitude. Uh, so we are the protest. So what are protesters so upset about? We have legitimate gripes, and to answer the latter questions first, uh, in America, if America cannot figure out a way to address these gripes, the country will likely become increasingly destabilized, as sociologists might say. And in that scenario, the current protests will likely be only the beginning. The problem, in the nutshell, is this. Inequality in this country has hit a level that has been seen only once in the nation's history. And unemployment has reached a level uh, uh, not higher th than the times that we knew during the Great Depression. And in other words, uh, it's basically a war against la labor and capital. And if there's ever been a time when capital was winning, it was certainly now. Jobs are scarce, so many adults have given up looking for them that a sharp decline in the participation level has showed that, uh, as America might say that we're at about 9% unemployment, it, those are just the people still looking. Those are the ones who are still um, um, able to collect uh, unemployment, but ironically, if you had those who are not able to uh, draw any more unemployment because they ran out of time and they cannot find a job. Um, we're talking about one in five people in America have lost their jobs. <clears throat> and it's not just construction workers or um, teachers or any of the sort. Uh, the unemployment is at an all-time high since uh, um, roughly about 1920. Um, that 9% rate only equates to about 14 million people, but if you consider the 17%, which is a more accurate figure, um, we, um, we're talking more like about 40 million Americans. That's incredible. And, uh, Mr. Hock, I'll have to have you um, do a quick uh, uh, wrap up here. Okay. Um, I'll just pretty much go to the last page. Uh, New York Times, Friday, November 18, 2011. Miss uh, Kara Buckley uh, did an interview with uh, uh, the New York Mayor, Michael R. Bloomberg, and he said that the protests were a dire sign of the public's economic fears. And he said, quote, the public is getting scared. They don't know what to do, and they're going to strike out. They just know the system isn't working, and they don't want to wait around. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anna Sluka. Uh, my name is Anna Catherine Sluka. My address is 2130 Sherman Avenue in Casanova, Michigan. I am a member of the General Assembly in Occupy Wall Street. I was there the first week. I was the first female arrest in this movement. And I am also a member of Occupy Muskegon. So I want to share just a few facts that some of you, I hope everyone is familiar with this, but these are just really astonishing facts about poverty here in our state and in our community. Uh, poverty rose from 9.8% in 1999 to 
2000 to 14.8% in 2009 to 2010. It's reflecting the pain of Michigan families struggling with unemployment and underemployment, according to the current population survey. A family of four lives in poverty with an income of about $22,000 or less. In Michigan, 1.3 million people, including uh, 100,000, sorry, um, 1 million 21,000 children went without health insurance. The big driver on this was the, was the loss of employer-sponsored insurances dropping from more than 76% coverage over a decade ago to 64% last year. One of the more troubling findings for Michigan is that the median household income dropped by more than $12,000 per family over the decade, the biggest drop in the country. Average median house income in 2010 was $46,600 below the national average of $50,000. Families who have been receiving cash assistance while they take care of a disabled child or spouse will be cut off after five years, regardless of the health of disabled, the disabled family member. Michigan lawmakers reduced unemployment benefits from 26 to 20 weeks at a time when half of the job was spent 26 weeks or longer searching for work. Michigan state budget starting October 1st, 2011 effectively eliminates cash assistance to 11,000 families with near, nearly 30,000 children, reduces back to school clothing allowances, cutting help for up to 12,400,000 children to purchase a new set of clothes for school, slashes the earned income tax credit for 800,000 working families from 20% to 6% of the federal credit, cuts mental health services, cutting funds that would help, that would help pay for health services for 1,000 child, childless adults with serious mental illness who don't qualify for Medicaid. These are startling statistics. And I urge our community to take every opportunity to share these startling statistics and our own personal stories. As a member of Occupy Muskegon, I am thrilled to share a beacon of light during these trying times. Please join us in the largest social movement in the world. Together, we can be the change we want to see in this world. And this is said with solidarity with every Occupy movement across the world. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Are there any other members of the audience that would care to uh, make any comment as a member of the public? Commissioner Carter. Seeing no one, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye, aye. Thank you.